So check this. This is an amazing story. It's a crazy story, but also speaks to what we face as African-Americans. OK, for the first time, a Florida father is facing charges of attempted murder of a law enforcement officer. And he's speaking out, folks. On February 3rd, Corey Marino Jr. was at home with his two children when the cops entered his home. Startled, he fired his gun, assuming it was intruders. While Corey was in custody, the kids were placed in the back seat of a police vehicle waiting for their mother. Police say the one-year-old was leaning against the car door when an officer opened it. The child fell out of the car, sustaining several facial injuries. We're joined right now uh, on the show by Corey Marino Jr. and his lawyer, James Bryant. They join us from Florida. Uh, also uh, joining us is Moya Dixon, uh, as well as attorney Rodney Diggs. And so glad to have uh, all of you on the show. So, so Corey, I, 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 wanna, I need to start with you because I'm... So what happened? Describe for us what took place when you're at home and all of a sudden cops burst in. Walk us through what happened. Corey? Yes. Yeah, so walk us through what happened on February 3rd. Um, it was approximately 4.45. I heard a big boom at my door. I got up real quick. My kids was in the bed for me, with me, they was in the bed. I got up, I grabbed my firearm. It's registered in my name. I have my gun license. I grabbed my firearm and I was heading down the hallway. By the time I got midway in the hallway, I heard another big boom and my door swung open. It was pitch dark in the living room and at outside. I don't have no porch light, so it was dark outside as well. So when the door swung open, I fired a warning shot at the door not seeing anyone out there. I just fired a shot. After a second after that, I heard them announce themselves saying that there was the police. I then lowered my firearm, I put it on the ground. I came outside with my hands up. I came all the way out the door and I got on the ground and that's when they put me in handcuffs. Okay, so you said it was 4.45 a.m.? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and why did they bust into your home? It, they had a search warrant for electronics and clothing. Okay, I'm sorry. So it's 4.45 in the morning, and they have a search warrant for electronics and clothing that they, what, allege was stolen? That led to a shooting that happened. Okay. So, James, I want to pull you in here. Yeah. Um, did the cops allege that Corey was involved in the shooting? No, we have no idea what the warrant was for. Uh, what we do know is that Mr. Marino was not subject to an arrest warrant. Um, we're, we, have, we don't really have much uh, knowledge specifically as it relates to why they were there to retrieve items. Um, Mr. Marino was renting the home, so he does not own that home. And so that's why it came as much of a surprise to him with someone bursting into his actual home at 4.45 a.m. Um, and specifically, you know, not there to arrest anybody, but to gather, um, you know, any sort of electronics or other, other, other items. Okay, I, I, I'm, 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 forgive me for being slightly confused. So... They weren't executing an arrest warrant for murder. No, they were not. They, they, they weren't executing a warrant for domestic violence, aggravated assault. Um, they weren't... If it, so the warrant was to retrieve some stolen electronics and clothing. We don't know if it was stolen electronics. It was just certain items that they were looking for. And the Pensacola police following, um, you know, this entry into the home, 
has been clear that they were not there to arrest Mr. Marino under any circumstance. Okay, okay, hold on. So, so uh, Corey, how many cops are we talking about? Um, I can't even, it was so many, I can't even name how many off the top Five, of my head. Five, six, 10, 15? 20, 25. Whoa, 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 hold up, hold up. 25 cops are on the scene at the home at 445 in the morning to retrieve some electronics and clothes. Yes, sir. It was the SWAT team and PPD. Um, okay, we've got three attorneys there. Ratley Diggs, Reginald Reeves, and James Bryant. Have y'all ever heard of 25 cops busting through somebody's house, I'm assuming with a no-knock warrant, at 4.45 in the morning for some electronics and clothes? I, I have not, and that's the problem. Um, in this instance, it is just such a, an odd time to come at that time in the morning to retrieve items. I could see if you know, my client was you know, Pablo Escobar, and they were looking to, to get him to arrest him for some sort of murder, but it was absolutely mind-boggling what happened. And it wasn't a no-knock warrant. It was a warrant in which they came, they knocked for maybe 10 seconds, and then they burst in. Um, this was against their policy. Pensacola PD has a very clear policy. You cannot enter into a person's house until you knock and announce after 15 seconds. And in this, sec in this instance, they did 10 seconds, and it was at 4.45 in the morning. So what that tells me is they had no interest in alerting Mr. Marino that they were intending to break into his home. For some clothes and electronics. Okay. Correct. I I'm, still I I'm still trying to understand here, and, and if anybody, is, is five of y'all, maybe y'all can it, it really explain this to me. So there was a robbery. At any point have they alleged that Corey was involved in this alleged robbery? To the best of our knowledge, no. And furthermore, Mr. Marino can tell you, this is a man who uh, has no criminal history. He worked for Navy Federal Credit Union in the fraud department. So that requires a very strict background uh, check for him. Um, he had his two children in the home, and they were aware of that. And they still decided to do what they did that, he, that, that early morning. Okay. And it's beyond me. Has anybody explained how they arrived at his house? No, there's, a, there's a, an investigation going on in general as it relates to how this entire situation unfolded. As you know, um, during this entire ordeal, um, Mr. Marino's young child, Kylan, uh, was injured by the police while, they were, while he was in their custody. And so currently, right now, it's my understanding that Pensacola P PD is involved in some sort of internal investigation. Okay. But it's, sir. Were, were any clothes and electronics removed from the house? Only electronics. Um, no clothes were removed. And uh, Mr. Marino is a registered firearm owner, so they took, they took a few bullets. And they, and they took his firearm that he had used. Um, Corey, first of all, Moya... First of all, it, it's, first of all, we're thankful that we can actually talk to you, Corey, because this is very similar to what happened to Amir Locke in Minneapolis. And he's dead. And this is part of the thing that is so, that, 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 that a lot of black folks fear, even those who have gun permits, in that you can have that for your protection and still end up being killed by cops. And to listen to this and then to hear what happened to your child is incredible. Uh, ha have they given any explanation on what happened to your one-year-old? Because, look, I I've got 13 nieces and nephews. If I walk over to a car and I see one of my nieces or nephew leaning up against the window, the last thing I'm going to do is open the doggone door to cause them to fall out and hurt themselves. 
Absolutely not. And I think Moya um, can really sort of explain, you know, what, what she's heard from them and what she actually heard from her three-year-old son, Kayon, who witnessed his little brother being injured. Um, I was told by three officers at one time that he leaned on the door and opened it himself. Um, someone opened the door and he fell out and that he was handed off and was dropped when he was handed off to a family member. Mm -hmm. My son told me um, that him and his brother were in the car with an officer. The officer was holding his brother and opened the door and dropped his brother onto his face. Um, Has anybody gotten an apology or an explanation from the cops, were those police officers wearing body camera footage so we can actually see what transpired there? So from our understanding, some of the SWAT team, they don't have body cam. We're, we haven't been able to identify whether or not the officer who was holding Kylan has body cam. But let me, let me explain something else. After Kylan had suffered these serious injuries to his head, and mind you, he's one, the officers did have EMS come out. And they decided to send EMS home instead of taking a baby with those serious injuries to the hospital. And when and when Miss Dixon arrived, she demanded to know what happened. They tried. They at first tried to say, oh, you know, maybe he had a bump and bruise or whatever. His face was covered in blood and she was she could not recognize him. And when she said, I need to take my son to the emergency room, the officers attempted to discourage her from taking him to the hospital. Now, mind you, it's a one-year-old child who just suffered a serious head injury um, by hitting his head on the concrete. And we all know the dangers when a child hits their head that young. He could have gone to sleep and pa- passed away that night if somebody didn't take a look at him. And that's how serious it is. She did receive an apology from the chief of police, but she never received an apology from these officers. And they completely told her multiple stories that don't add up. And the idea that she was encouraged not to take her child to the hospital. And that Pensacola PD specifically canceled EMS from taking him to the emergency room is absolutely neglectful. It seems as if something was intentional and we're going to get to the bottom of it. All right, so here's a statement that the police uh, actually issued. Um, And I wanna read this statement right here. Uh, Go ahead and pull it up, please. The statement reads, after the search warrant was served, two children who were inside the residence were in the back seat of a car with a PPD investigator while they were waiting on family members to arrive to pick them up. A large vehicle approached that uh, approach that needed assistance navigating through the vehicles that were in the road. The investigator got out of the back seat to assist the driver. One of the children was leaning Uh, on the door of the car when the investigator opened it to get back in and fell out of the car. The investigator wasn't aware that the child was leaning on the door. The child was checked by EMS for injuries. Both children were later released to family members. Um, Let's deal with this attempted murder charge. What the hell is that? It's it's absolutely mind-boggling. As you know, Florida has a stand your, stand your ground, castle doctrine rule. In this instance, Mr. Marino absolutely uh, falls within the exception of standing his ground and protecting his home. He had no idea who was bursting into his home that night, and you have every right to use um, deadly force in order to prevent an invasion into your home. When it comes to law enforcement, if Mr. Marino does not know that they are law enforcement, he has the right to use deadly force. Furthermore, Law enforcement, if they do not follow proper police policy, they also cannot say that the stand your ground or the castle doctrine doesn't apply. In this instance, in the Pensacola police's own arrest report, they said they waited 10 seconds after they knocked before entering into the home. We know that the policy itself says you have to wait a minimum of 15 seconds. That is a major, major difference when you're talking about seconds in a situation like this. And it, and it really could have been the difference between Mr. Marino being safe, the children being safe, and what we have right now, where we have a young man who has a family that he's been taken care of, and now he's facing the possibility of somebody attempting to, to take his freedom away. And we will fight that every step of the way. I, it, is, it, it, it is wild. Um, I'm going to bring in my, my panel here. With, I know they have questions. 
But, but this is the thing that we constantly talk about. Philando Castile has a permit for a gun. Tells the cop, I got a permit, he ends up dead. Um, Amir Locke had a permit for his gun, cops bust in. Uh, of course, they, they, they don't even show, he doesn't even, he doesn't even point at anyone, he ends up dead. And same thing, the, the young man who was with Breonna Taylor, uh, who fired, they charged him with attempted murder and charges were later dropped. I, I'm just trying to understand, a black man in his house and folks bust in at 4.45 in the morning, can't protect himself, and he gets charged with attempted murder? You know, you know, Roland, what, what, what this is saying is that the Second Amendment doesn't apply to black people. The Second Amendment doesn't apply to black men. We talk about the right to bear arms. This man had every reason to want to protect his one-year-old and his three-year-old at 4.45 in the morning. And he did, and he exercised his right. But when a black man exercises his right, he's murdered. Or be, in, in the event that he's not murdered, he's charged with attempted murder. And it is absolutely, like I said, it, it is mind boggling. And again, that's why we are calling for the Florida state uh, attorney not to press charges against Ms. or not to bring charges against Mr. Uh, Marino. Uh, and I'm quite sure you haven't heard Jack from the NRA. Uh, let's go to my panel. I'm gonna start with Larry. He's there in Florida. Larry, go ahead. Any questions? Yeah, you know, yeah, I, I, you know, first of all, I, I'm glad that, you know, he didn't end up, um, police didn't engage him in the kind of way that we would have to be having a different conversation. Let me say that, first of all, particularly as a father, right? Uh, and it's obviously someone who lives in the state. I think this, my question to you is, is in general, um, and probably to your attorney, um, how do you see this playing out? Um, because like Roland described some other situations where black, black males in particular were, were, were killed and, and Breonna Taylor's a situation of sister. But we keep seeing this repeating over and over and over again. So into your, into your attorneys, how do you think this is going to play out with the state attorney general here in the state of Florida? Here's what I'm hoping. I think there's, there is enough information out there for the state attorney to make a decision that in this instance, it does not make sense to bring charges against Mr. Marino. Um, here, clearly, the Pensacola PD did not follow policy before entering into his home. Secondly, why would you come to effectuate a warrant for documents and things at 445 in the morning? Why couldn't you wait at seven, until 7 o'clock? Mr. Marino would have gladly let him in. So what I am asking for the state attorney to do is the right thing, which is to say, you know what, in this instance, we've got to protect the, the rights of the homeowners. Yes, we want officers to be safe. But given these very specific facts, nothing substantiates a reason to pursue charges. So I'm hoping that is the case. However, uh, you never know what's going to happen uh, when it comes to a decision by a state attorney. So if, in fact, they do decide to pursue charges, we will have to, you know, we will have to put up the defense necessary to ensure this man's freedom. And as it relates to the children, they are absolutely devastating. We still don't know what injuries Kylan has suffered. I'm <coughs> telling you that he has suffered injuries that he was walking prior to this incident. He's no longer walking, and he's one. Uh, he has significant emotional mood swings, and that's very indicative of, of a potential injury to the frontal lobe. And then you have his brother, Kayon, who is, who is frightened every single day. And it is heartbreaking. But what we want is accountability. And I think that if all parties use their heads, they'll work with us to resolve the issue as it relates to the injuries that happened to the children and to not pursue charges against Mr. Marino. It's the right thing to do. Reese. Um, my question was actually going to be about the children. Um, Ms. Dixon and Mr. Marino, what you have experienced with your children is just unconscionable. And Mr. Marino, the treatment you've experienced is appalling and abhorrent. My question is, what are the political levers that we can use? Because we know these are political decisions. This is an election year that we can exert to reverse this decision and make it untenable for them to continue with these baseless charges. We need the Pensacola community, and they came out today. We need the Pensacola community to band together. We need law enforcement to accept the fact that, you know what, this probably wasn't the best way we could have handled this situation. And most certainly, the injuries to the children are unacceptable. Coming together and saying, you know what, we apologize. 
and, um, and, and we'd like to work this out. But we need community leaders. We need uh, just the citizens of Pensacola to start saying and writing to their city council members, um, to the mayor, this isn't right. And we stand by Corey and we stand for justice. We stand by Kylan, we stand by Kayon, and we stand by Moya. And that's really the way we, we pull those political levers. And again, uh, you know, m my team will be speaking along with uh, Lieutenant Timothy May, who is, their, who is their pastor, who's been very vocal with this. So we're hoping that we're speaking to the community leaders, the state attorney, as well as the chief of police to resolve this. But it also helps to have the community support them. And, and they most certainly came out in mass today. Greg. Thank you, Roland. And uh, I'll keep this brief. I'm really trying hard to restrain myself from calling these uh, Paterolas devils, saying they are from the depths of hell. So I won't say that. Um, you know, listening and reviewing, first of all, your composure is remarkable. Let me say that to both of y'all, seriously. And, and, and thank you for that. And I realize, Counselor, that, you know, that that's a major point in this. Reading about this case sent me to the UN's definition of torture. And while this isn't quite torture, it is cruel, inhumane, and degrading punishment or treatment. And that doesn't require intent. My question, I think, is, is in line with Reese's. And you answered Reese's question, which leads me to a different question. How can we nationalize, internationalize this so that it isn't just the citizens of Pensacola? Because, you know, enough is enough. You've attacked a baby. At this point, we need to rain fire on them. And so, you know, I know this is part of his Congressional Black Caucus, the NAACP, uh, the churches, denominations. What can we do to make these Paterolas famous? Because they did drop the charges against, as you mentioned, Kenneth Walker and Breonna Taylor's case, and that's what they're going to use it. Are they trying to use it for leverage, whatever? But the more this spotlight shines on them, let us burn them with fire with this spotlight. Is that part of your strategy as you move forward? Absolutely. That is why we're here. I mean, they they retained us because we do not have any fear of anyone or anything when it comes to fighting for the constitutional rights of people around this country, specifically this black family and specifically the challenges that black people have faced where their civil rights are completely being tram trampled. And what I'm also going to say is this, we will bring hell. And the reason why that is, is because no knock warrants, knock and wait for two seconds to say I complied in busting in people's homes, it's unacceptable. That's right. Disregarding a black man's right to his second amendment, knowing that, and they knew, they knew he was a registered firearm. Disregarding that and charging every black man for wanting to defend themselves, that has to end. And yes, we will talk to the CBC, and I need the president to continue to do what he promised. <coughs> promised to make change about these things. And we've already had a series of unnecessary deaths. And quite frankly, it is driving me nuts that we are not doing more, that we're not seeing more movement. We saw the George Floyd bill die. It is time for all of us around this country to once again band together to put an end to no-knock warrants, to put an end to knock an entry where you do not give that person enough time to even know what's going on. It's unacceptable, and we have to start fighting these things, and we have to hold people accountable. And people who hurt babies must be fired, period. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, it, it makes no sense uh, whatsoever um, uh, at all. Uh, first of all, um, uh, Corey, um, how are you doing uh, e personally, emotionally? Because that's a whole lot to deal with uh, when we talk about um, we we'll talk about these uh, these stories like this. Honestly, I'm not doing too good. Uh, I'm not sleeping at night. I'm up. I, my anxiety. I never had anxiety before, but lately I've been having real bad anxiety. I wake up to loud noises. If I hear any loud noises, I hyperventilate. It's just it's it's really been tough on me. And then to see my kid. The way he was is is really been hard, and also economically, you lost your job. Yeah, so I'm without a job. Well, how, how'd you lose your job? 
the next day they fired me saying due to the circumstances. What? The Navy Federal Credit Union fired this young man, someone who had passed all of their rigorous background checks because of the circumstances. He hasn't even technically been charged with the crime yet. And now he is unemployed and he is trying, he's struggling to be a father to pay for things for his family and still be a father to provide them emotional support. It, 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 it's devastating. Unbelievable. Um, folks, uh, we appreciate uh, you give, providing us this exclusive. Please keep us abreast of what happens uh, in this case so we can uh, update our audience. All right, folks, back to our Roadmark Unfiltered video in just one moment. He makes sure that our stories are told. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roland. I love y'all. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, there's a difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? 